So uh, finally, uh, let's talk about how we can handle exceptions. Uh, so errors that detected during executions are called exceptions. Um, although there are still errors, but we just call it exceptions. Um, so no matter how good you are as a programmer, so uh, you will still have make error. You will still making errors, and for 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 an experienced programmer, so they will always um, pre define in their Python code that if some errors happened, so how can we handle those uh, errors? So sometimes those errors are expected, and sometimes those errors are unexpected. So no matter what types of errors we are looking, or what type of the exceptions we are talking about, so there is a way that we can um, define some actions in Python try to avoid those exceptions so that our Python code will not be interrupted. So uh, we can use a try clause to ex execute your code. So we can put your normal code in this try clause where you think there might be some errors. And after that, we can, in this accept clause, we can add additional actions that to define that so uh, what if some errors in a try block happened okay so if some errors are defined in a try block occurred so we can handle that one in this except clause so if there's no errors happened and which is great and the except clause will be ignored okay however so if there are exceptions occurred so the rest of the try class will be skipped and the accept class will be executed. OK, so the syntax is like this. So we define a tree statement and also within indentation, you just define a normal Python code. So while loop, for loop, etc. Um, and next, we define the expect, accept. And in this except, you can specify the error. So if you know what error is going to happen, so you can try to handle that specific error. So uh, to handle that error, you can use the indentation as well. And also you can define your Python code to handle the errors. Again, so if, if everything went well, so this part will be ignored. And if something happened, and this one will be skipped and uh, the the code that you define in this except section will be triggered and also be will be executed okay so that is how we can handle exceptions so let's see an example that in python okay and uh, let's see uh, here let's say we want to print one divided by zero okay so this is not, in this statement, in this Python code, there is no syntax errors and there's no any errors, except that mathematically, uh, no one can be divided by zero. Okay, so that is an error. So let's see what type of error we will, uh, we will be triggered. All right, uh, looks like I'm still in this debugging mode. Okay, so Let's write again. Okay, uh, so let's uh, close everything. So let's rewrite. All right, so now you can see we have triggered an error that is this one. It is called zero division error. Okay, so that basically means that uh, you cannot divide any numbers by zero. So that is the error that we we just generated. And you don't need to remember all those errors. So uh, you can just check on um, PESA and see those common errors. So now let's try to define a uh, uh, try accept uh, statements. Let's say try. Okay. And we put that one within this uh, try 
um, uh, block. So that will cause an error. And let's say accept. OK, so if you don't specify the error type here, OK, and it will handle all the errors that you created. And here we can see print. So here the way that we just handled error is that error. OK, so now let's write. OK, and now you can see that this part has been ignored and also we just triggered the error. OK. And if you know that exactly the errors that you're going to uh, cause, and you can just type that error. So in this case, the error is zero division error. So that means this except class will only handle this error. OK, so zero division error. And you can follow another except clause, OK, and to handle the other errors. So OK, to handle the other errors. And now if we write, you can see because we triggered this zero division error, so that we just print out this zero division error. OK, and if there are other errors and the other, we will trigger this except um, clause. OK, so that is how we handle the exceptions. OK, so now let's go back to our uh, while loop and also break parse and also condition uh, statement. So here I have a question. So we have those three Python code, OK, three pieces of the Python code. And you can see they're um, pretty, pretty much similar. So within this while loop, we have this try except uh, statement and also we can see here we want um, print one divided by i minus three and i will start it from five and we know that when i equals three so this will generate an error okay and we can see all of them will generate the error and the only difference is that how we are going to handle such errors. So the first solution, the first code is using break statement. The second code is using pass statement. And the third Python code is using a continuous statement. OK, so now my question is that which statement should you use to finish this while loop? So I want to finish that while loop from i equals 5 until i equals um, zero or minus one. Okay, so which one can finish this while loop? The break, the pass, or the continue? So you can pause the video here and also before you run in those Python code, so think um, this question a little bit and see if you can resolve this quest question without running the Python code. All right, so now let's look at uh, those those three Python code in, in, uh, in Python. OK, so let's comment out this part. We see that i equals 5, where i is greater or equal to 0. And we, what we are, we are going to do is that we are going to try print 1 divided by i minus 3. OK, and we know that we're going to have errors. So um, we see except OK, so let's first try break. OK, um, so so let's see where that work or not. So let's write. OK, it just printed two numbers. So that means that when i equals 3, it stopped. OK, so the break is not what we want. OK, and let's try pass. Pass worked. You can see when i equals 3, OK, 
And that one, uh, it said pass and it continued to the next loop. So pass worked. And so pass is the right answer. So what about continue? OK, so if we run a continue. So here we have a dead loop. OK, you can see it is keep running. It is keep running, 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 but never stop. OK, so now we have a dead loop by using continue. So to stop this Python code, let's just hit this stop button. OK, um, so OK, so the, the right answer is that we should use the pass statement. So that is also an example that uh, in some scenarios that pass is the right choice. OK, uh, so let's all go back to the pass and also let's go to the Let's check that one in the, into more detail. So I think for the break, it is pretty clear. So if when we go to i equals 3, it just simply stops the loop. So that's why it will not work. So let's see how the pass will work. So when we go, when we say i, let's look at i. So when i equals 3, so that's where we trigger the errors. And now if you see pass, so that means we just continue, OK? And next, i equals 2. And 2 will be brought into this while loop, OK? So that we will continue to uh, print out the result until this loop finished. So that's why that, in some cases, pass is the right choice. But what about continue? OK, so let's try continue. OK, so when i equals 3, let's see what will happen. So we will continue this loop. So that means we will stop the current iteration here. And we'll go back to this while loop. And in right now, the i still equals 3. So that triggers this error. So we go to accept. And we go to continue. And because it will continue, it will stop the current iteration. So we will not reach this statement. So i is always equal to 3. OK, so that's why that now we are in this data loop. OK, 